What a day to be at the IEF in New Delhi as we have these geopolitical tensions and uh, of course we're seeing both WTI and Brent rising overnight and continuing this morning. I'm now joined by IEA Executive Director Dr. Fatih Birol. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Let's start with that geopolitical tension. Even though we've had the U.S. shale uh, surprise inventories yesterday from the federal data, 10 million barrels U.S. has now overpassed. But the geopolitical tensions are moving the market. What do you make of this? Business as usual. The oil markets are uh, very much linked to uh, geopolitical tensions, especially if they are in Middle East, the heart of the global oil uh, exports. This is something uh, to be expected. And if the tensions continue, uh, I am afraid they will continue to have an impact on the uh, oil markets and the uh, oil prices. If they continue, how high do you think we can reach? I cannot forecast how the tensions will go and their impacts on the prices, but definitely this will be a, a reason uh, to push the prices up. If it's like last year when we had a strike on Syria, we saw uh, prices str uh, jump immediately, but then they, you know, they slowly start to claw back down. How, do you, how quickly do you think we could see prices come back down? It will depend on the, how the tensions uh, go ahead and which countries and what is the size of the tensions. Uh, but uh, Middle East is still the heart of the global oil exports. Therefore, tensions there would definitely have impact on the oil markets. We have other tensions with trade, a potential trade war rhetoric back and forth between U.S. and China. How will this affect demand? I mean, trade disputes are not... Uh, 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 something unusual uh, in the energy markets, economic uh, 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 developments, and uh, I think this is one of them. And uh, I don't expect it will have a direct impact on the oil markets uh, for now. Sokjan saying there's a 70 percent chance that Donald Trump won't extend the waivers on Iran, so we could see harsher sanctions on the country. What will this do to the global market if we have Iranian oil coming off? We have a, a lot of oil in the markets uh, today, in the lots of uh, stocks, a tremendous amount of uh, oil coming from the United States. We are seeing the second wave of a uh, shale revolution is uh, taking place. And uh, as a result, uh, I believe that markets will be well supplied for the uh, next years uh, to come. On top of Iran, though, we do have an economic crisis in Venezuela. We see, are seeing them as well lose a lot of oil. Do you think it's time with Iran, Venezuela, the possibly to more tightening in the market for OPEC to dial back the historic deal? It is up to OPEC to decide uh, what they are going to do. But, but two things, the market two things. I believe it is in the benefit of everybody that the uh, oil prices are determined by the markets. Second, in terms of Venezuela, this is something uh, very serious. The Venezuelan oil production today is about the half of the uh, level when uh, Mr. Chavez took office in 1999. So we have never seen such a big drop in oil production in a country. And when we look at the trends, I can only say that if we continue to go down, and the question that we don't know how much it will go down, an important point in the global oil market debate. And do you think that we, the oil market due to this will be tightened, uh, rebalanced even quicker? It will definitely bring the uh, producing countries' uh, t total production uh, downwards. Bloomberg News had a story recently that Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, is looking to target $80 per barrel. Do you think uh, this is possible? Yeah, I hear such news uh, in the last uh, uh, few days, but I can tell you very frankly uh, here. Very high oil prices are not in the interest of the oil importing countries, especially this country like India, India where yes. we are now, uh, uh, ranging from the economic growth to trade balance. But also, perhaps as important as that, high oil prices, very high oil prices for a uh, long time is not in the benefit, in the interest of the oil exporting countries as well. So uh, one should be very careful what, we, what one is uh, wishing for. Very long uh, time, very long prices is not in the interest of the oil exporting countries and uh, oil importing countries and as such for the global economy. So is this target price, you think, a mistake? No, it's up to them. I don't uh, talk about the prices, uh, the price levels. But what I'm saying is I wish the oil prices are determined by the market forces. And if you see very high prices for a very long time, this is definitely bad news for the global economy. 
for oil exporters and uh, oil importers like the countries like in uh, India. I spoke to the Indian uh, minister, Pradam. He's saying he's targeting, oh, he thinks what a reasonable price would be $50 a barrel. Fair for both importers and exporters. Where do you see demand in India going? Indian demand, oil demand is growing. I would, I would say exploding because India is an economy which is flourishing. It will 7% uh, growth which means that lots of energy is needed, oil, gas, renewables, all of them. And since India has very poor domestic oil production, oil imports will be skyrocketing. And as such, India's economy's vulnerability vis-a-vis -vis the high oil prices will be also increasing. Therefore, India will be one of the countries which will be very seriously affected from high oil prices. And I know that Indian government is taking measures domestically and internationally to address this issue. Right, because prices were, when the administration came on, in the crash, and now they have an election next year, and we see these prices going up. Um, fo following, on, following on India, they're also not... Saudi Arabia used to be their top importer. Um, now they're looking to places like the United States. The U.S., we saw yesterday, 10 million barrels they've surpassed. What do you make of U.S. shale? Is there more to come? Definitely so. Uh, we said since 10 years, a revolution is taking place in the United States. Uh, 10 years ago, we said it's a silent revolution. It became very loud now in terms of oil, but also in terms of natural gas. United States, the LNG is today going to the Middle East. They are exporting energy to the Middle East. I mean, think about this. 10 years ago, nobody could uh, think about this. To uh, India, China, Europe, and elsewhere. All the dynamics of energy is changing, shale shakes the uh, energy uh, uh, demand, energy picture seriously. So uh, I would expect that India and other countries would diversify their portfolio, uh, increase the number of uh, uh, oil and gas uh, importing uh, countries, uh, and uh, therefore uh, we expect uh, that this is a new trend, more diversification, more exporters, and the importers will diversify their portfolios.